taking a look at the HTML file we'll be working with in this episode and for the rest of this series, it's in a very similar format to the previous series HTML file in that we're using Bootstrap. We've got a simple header. We've got the main container area here, which is where we're going to stick most of our HTML code. And we're including AngularJS. And we have a main JS file, which is where we're going to stick all of our code. So jumping into the main.js file really briefly. So we've named our module code craft. If you remember, all of our Angular code has to go inside an Angular module. And I've created a controller called persons controller, and we're passing in that special scope variable as the first parameter. I've added a variable called persons, well, an array called persons with a load of random data. Before you get excited, this is uh, fake data that I found from the internets. So don't go just try calling any of these numbers. Well, you can if you want, I don't care. So we've got a large array of people here, and what we want to do in this episode is to render all of this beautiful data inside a table. So first things first, I want to jump back into our HTML file. And I'm going to, if you remember, we have to add an ng controller directive to the DOM element which we want to attach our controller to. So I'm going to attach it to our main container div element there. And I think it was called persons controller. Now, everything inside this div is going to have access to the scope and the functions on persons controller. And the next thing I'm going to do is just start adding in the HTML table element. So there you go. Now, because we're using Bootstrap, I'm just going to add in some nice classes that Bootstrap provide just to pretty things up a little bit. And then I'm going to add the column headers. So I think I want to use four column headers. I'm going to use, well, I'll leave the first one blank for now. I want the name, I want the email, and I want the birthday. And the next thing I want to do is I want to start adding the rows. So let me scroll up a little bit. So I'm going to add TR and then I'm going to introduce you to the main directive for this episode and actually this series, which is ng repeat. I'm just going to flesh this out a little bit. Now, as you might guess, ng repeat loops through each of the elements in each of the people in the persons array and does something. What does it do? Well, it's going to render HTML. Now, for those of you who are probably quite used to using other template rendering frameworks, unlike other ones, it's not going to repeat the things inside itself. It's actually in Angular, it will actually repeat the whole TR row. So for every person in persons, it will generate a TR row. So let's start using the data binding, which we learn in series one to render the cells in this row. The first one I'm going to leave blank. That's a secret for now. Uh, but let's add the rest. So I'm going to add, so it's person is the variable. So I'm going to add person.name. And what was it? Email and birthday. Email, and it's actually called birth date. So just so we're clear, I'm going to flip back into the JavaScript file. So these are linking up to the attributes in this object, so name, email, and birth date. So let's jump back into the HTML, and that looks good to me. So let's run this in a browser. So there you go. So we're rendering that entire table, all the elements from that array, all the way down to the bottom. But the first column is blank. Why have I left that blank? That's to show you something. Let's go back into the HTML for a second. And in the first cell, I'm just going to add a bit of code. So I'm going to data bind to a something called index. So index refers to the array index in persons that you're looping through. So it will start from zero, then one, then two, then three, etc. And for the column name, I'm just going to put the hash symbol. So let's go back to our Chrome browser and refresh. And there you go. So now we've got the index going all the way down the left hand side of the page. But one thing I'm not super happy with is if you look the date, the birthday on the right hand side is a really ugly format. I don't think end users are going to find that quite readable. So I just want to render that birthday in somewhat more human readable format. So let's go back into our HTML. 
So we're now going to use something we touched upon in the previous series, which is called filters. So it's that birthday. I don't want to render it as a standard string. I want to pump it through a filter. Now there's a built-in filter in Angular called date, where you can pass in the to the date a parameter. So that's what this syntax means. So it's going to pass the birthday variable through the filter date, which is just a function. And that date function is going to take a parameter, which you define by colon and then uh, either a string or a number or something along those lines. Now the date can take format as a, if you're aware of date formatting in every single language out there, it's gonna have its own format specifiers. But we also have a built-in one in, in Angular called long date, which I'm gonna use here. So let's go back into our Chrome browser and see what that looks like. So there you go, it's now rendered all the dates in a much more human readable format. 